So you want to invest, but you're thinking, what are even investing? What's mutual funds? What's shares? What's stocks? What e what what's ETFs? What's what's RITS? R E I T S? What's what's that? Well, that's what you're thinking. <laughs> this video is just for you. Hey guys, guys and, and welcome, welcome to Marriage and Money. Money. Welcome back to the channel. Yeah, yeah, welcome yeah. back to another video. If you're new around here, would I like you to subscribe to our channel so you can be prepared and be alerted for our upcoming videos and if you like this video whilst watching and you think it is actually been helpful for you then give us a thumbs up and share this video don't keep the goodies to yourself in today's video we want to really dive into what financial instruments are available for purchase on the stock market so the first thing we're going to talk about is a share what is a share a share which we kind of talked touched upon in our previous video but we'll give you the definition here <laughs> in essence a share is purchasing an ownership into a company so a company says okay I have this amount of shares for this amount of price and you say I've got this money I believe in the future of this business I'm gonna purchase a share and it's that simple you mm -hmm. become an investor in that company However, you know, various companies have different prices as how much that share essentially costs. So then we move on to stocks. What is a stock? A stock means just you have multiple shares. That's all it means. That's right. And that's where you get those terms, shareholders and stockholders. So once you've invested in a company on the stock market, you're a shareholder or a stockholder if you have multiple shares you can have that stockholder title but yeah that's literally what they mean it's also important to understand the risk level associated with stocks so from research stocks are quite high risk secondly we go into mutual funds essentially this is a basket mm -hmm. of multiple stocks yeah so you might have stocks from Tesla, you might have stocks from McDonald's. <laughs> you might have stocks from Amazon, for example. So a mutual fund has multiple stocks and you as an investor can buy into that. And this mutual fund is managed by a manager who actively says, okay, I'm gonna put this particular stocks from this company, I'm gonna put this particular stocks from this company, and that's that. Yeah, and also including the mutual fund, it is not just you as an investor, mm -hmm. but it's many other investors where their monies are pooled mm -hmm. all together, and that manager or investor manager puts those allocation of money into different stocks in those different companies. The risk level associated with mutual funds vary. You can have high, medium, and low. So that's for you to find out when you do your research. Under the umbrella of mutual funds, we then have ETFs and we have index funds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> an index fund and an ETF both have this same element in which that they track the market. Yeah, So they don't try to outperform what the market is doing, they just tr simply track a particular market. In the UK, the market that we have is the FTSE 100 and we also have the FTSE 250. And then we have the FTSE All Share and then there's more. An ETF and an index fund can both track any of those markets that I've just mentioned. The difference with them both is that an index fund can only be purchased at the end of the stock market close. So you can only buy it at one price when the market is closed. And then ETF can be purchased on the stock market at multiple times so it, in essence it has an element of trading associated towards it. Now we go into the topic of bonds, not James Bond, just clear them out for the meantime. Bonds. Bonds are investors lending money to a government or a company or a range of companies that are requiring money so that they may need money for a particular project or a particular objective that they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. With this bond, this is the company or a government saying, hey, they come to you, hey man, I need some money. I got this project to do. So if you wanna give me that money, like 1,000 pounds, guess what? I'll pay it back to you with interest on top. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you may be thinking, okay, how long are they gonna pay me back? Because um, time's money, fair point. With a bond, there's three different terms. So you got a short-term bond, which is about one to four years. 
you got a medium term bond, which is from four to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then you got long term bonds, which is 10 or more years. So you do have a choice of which kind of bond you want to go for, you know, whether short term, medium term, long term. Again, guys, depending on your financial objectives or your financial goals. So do check them out. And with bonds, the risk is very low. Why? Because you have the guarantee that you will get paid back. Mm -hmm. The money that you lent and interest on top of that. So that's why some people do go with bonds because, you know, they're like, yo, I don't want to lose some money. I want to be... You know, I just want a low risk, you know what I mean? So that is another option that you can invest in. Another financial instrument which you can invest in is called RITS, R-E-I-T-S. This means Real Estate Investment Trust. This is where companies may wanna use or own a property, but to own a property or to build that property, they need money. Yes, cash, cash that. So they'll go to investors, provide them the proposal of there's the project that I want to do in terms of the pro property, whether it's leasing space or they should build on a property so people can rent it out. So investors will invest into that project. And from that project, the company will be able to lease the space or get money from rent payments. So with the money that they generate from that income, they will pay their investors at least 90% or more from that income they generated. And then that's how you make money from real estate investment trusts. Second to last on our list is commodity. And lastly, we also have currency. So commodities are things like gold and silver and foreign exchange are currencies in which that people can purchase on the stock market. And you might have heard people trading these things as well, but this video is not for that. <laughs> well, I hope you've been encouraged. I hope you've been enlightened and learn more about the different financial instruments which you can invest in. So you learn about stocks and shares, mutual funds, ETFs and index funds. You've learned about RITS, R-E-I-T-S. You learn about bonds and also commodities and foreign exchange. So again, guys, do your research and stay tuned so you can learn on our next video how to allocate these different financial assets so you can have a healthy, well-balanced portfolio to help you achieve your financial goals. So until next time, bye guys. See ya.